Good morning, good day. Um, I'm here today to talk to you about hyperbaric oxygen. Hyperbaric oxygen is also called HBOT and we have a good article on our Cancer Active website about it. Now, what is it? It was first created, discovered, in, about 70 years ago when it was used for divers who came up too fast and got the bends and they were put into hyperbaric oxygen chambers to recover. Quite rapidly it was it was found that it was very good for healing and so people who were burned for example firemen or soldiers at war they were put into hyperbaric oxygen chambers as well and that healing benefit continued into other diseases so for example nowadays it's used quite extensively with people who have MS. Now I looked into it because my aunt had cancer and she had radiotherapy and that radiotherapy which was on her womb actually hit and damaged her backbone and I knew there was some research in America that showed that if you had hyperbaric oxygen it would reduce the side effects of radiotherapy if you had it during the radiotherapy or for up to one year afterwards. So I went looking and, and you know did my research as usual and I wrote a piece on hyperbaric oxygen. Now when I reviewed the research I was quite amazed because as I said, first of all, there clearly was research that showed it reduces the side effects of radiotherapy, number one. But then I found it reduces the side effects of chemo, not just radiotherapy. But then I found that it also improves the success of radiotherapy. And that's a staggering conclusion because there's a lot of research on that. And the first study, would you believe, was in 1974 in England, and um, it was Watson... Um, et al. and it was in the British Journal of Radiology and they showed that hyperbaric oxygen acted as a sensitizer for radiotherapy so it actually made it work better. Next I found a number of studies that showed that hyperbaric oxygen worked as an aid to chemotherapy and made chemotherapy more successful too and then just as an aside I was looking into the ketogenic diet and I noticed that um, Professor Seyfried of Boston and Dominic D'Agostino of Florida had got together on a trial with, it was with rats, and they were looking at the ketogenic diet, and they showed that the ones they gave hyperbaric oxygen to survived longer and got less, uh, uh, got over their cancer, and, and so on. So, you know, they're going on to human trials now. But my point, really, overall, was this actually reduces side effects, this actually improves the success of radiotherapy, this improves the success of chemotherapy. It's a no-brainer. Why would you not use it? Well, as you, we all know, life is not that simple. Um, since 1931, we've known, uh, when Warburg got his Nobel Prize, that oxygen was the enemy of the cancer cell. Um, and since then, lots of people have tried to beat cancer with oxygen, ozone therapy, and so on. And they've had moderate success, but it's been very, very limited. But frankly, if they succeeded, it would make vast swathes of the drug industry redundant. Let's be honest about this, because it's a very simple philosophy. Um, now, when I wrote my article on HBOT, not surprisingly, I was immediately attacked by the pro-pharma skeptics. Chris Williams is trying to say that this cures cancer. No, no, I never, ever mentioned that at all. I was talking about the side effects of radio and so on. But misinformation does abound out there, and we've had a lot of it just lately, which is why I'm making this video. Um, nurses in the UK still drop into patients little bits of nonsense like you shouldn't have uh, hyperbaric oxygen when you're having radiotherapy. Well, <laughs> frankly, it's the opposite. <laughs> it's the absolute opposite. So they're, they're wrong. And we've had other people told recently that they shouldn't use hyperbaric hyperbaric oxygen if they're having platinum-based drugs. Well, again, I'll tell you, I can't find any research out there that says that's true. But I think the best bit um, of medical uh, mythology and uh, fear-mongering propaganda is the claim that actually hyperbaric oxygen spreads cancer. It actually can make matters worse. Now, we've had this very recently with one uh, person I know but secondly I was buddying you probably know I buddy people I was buddying a lady who had never had a day's remission 
since she started with her ovarian cancer. I'm pleased to say she's now in remission. But she went to a doctor to have hyperbaric oxygen and he said, you can't have that. What idiot suggested that? It spreads cancer. So, being the idiot, I wrote to him and said, I'm the idiot. Now, here's my article. Please, could you give me the research that shows it spreads cancer? Because I will happily include it because our aim at Cancer Active is to brief people fully on the, on the benefits and the dangers. And of course, there was no research. But more than that, I went and did my homework again. And I found that in America, there have been two lady doctors who had actually done a meta-study on all the research since 2006 to do with hyperbaric oxygen. And I'm going to read you this. The research meta-study was done by Professor Ingrid Murr and Professor Linda Stur. And they said, like two quotes from this, Number one, there is no foundation whatsoever in research that HBO acts as a stimulator of cancer or promotes recurrence. None whatsoever. But they went on to say, the sceptics and the drug family's worst fear, I guess. On the other hand, there is evidence that HBO may have tumour inhibiting effects in certain cancer subtypes. In fact, I updated the article, I sent it all to the doctor, he apologised. He read it all and apologised. I've got three people in America I'm buddying who have actually all been recommended hyperbaric oxygen by their doctors to have whilst they're having chemotherapy. Frankly, this is a no-brainer. Unfortunately, in Britain, we don't have many chambers. You can ring up the MS Society and they will actually offer to tell you well they'll tell you where the nearest one is and you can go along there and you make a donation it's 10 to 15 pounds normally the procedure is when you're having chemo or radio you might have three sessions of maybe uh, one hour in a week two would probably be adequate so that's the whole thing really um, all I can say at the moment is I have found no negatives whatsoever and just to recap it actually reduces the side effects of radio and chemo it improves the success of radiotherapy, it improves the success of chemo, and I think this is a complete no-brainer and that everybody who has cancer, who is having some of these treatments, can only make themselves slightly better, their treatment slightly better, if they have hyperbaric oxygen at the same time, or in the case of radiotherapy, up to a year afterwards, when it will reduce the side effects. Thank you very much.